looking at uh, management decision making. So we've moved on to the next little section of the specification and in this section we'll be looking at uh, how managers make decisions effectively um, and there are a few terms that you need to be aware of. Okay, so this is, I've just um, taken this from the specification. I have shown this in a previous video, but just to remind you that decision making uh, is an extremely important part of this course. AQA have uh, used the phrase decision making in five of the six units that you study at AS. So it's really, uh, really important to understand this process. Um, and a lot of the exams that you answer will be about decisions that need to be made. So this is kind of a high level overview looking at how decisions are made. So, um, what is a decision? A decision is a conclusion or resolution reached after consideration. Um, I seem to uh, remember being told by somebody that decision uh, literally means to cut off all other options or all other paths. I think that's the Latin root of the word decision. You uh, decide on a course of action and, and, and you're set. You cut off all other options and, um, and you do that. So uh, that's what a decision is. Um, and there are two different ways of making decisions that you need to be aware of. Um, scientific decision making occurs when a logical approach is used to make a decision. Uh, it will be data driven, we'll look at the pro probability of certain outcomes occurring, we'll maybe try and put some numerical values on things happening. It's a very logical, thought based approach. Um, to decision making. You can imagine that this is you know, quite intensive on your brain, uh, scientific decision making. Um, the opposite of that, or a different way of making decisions I suppose, is, um, so scientific decision making is about the brain, intuition is about the gut. Um, making a decision based on gut feeling, uh, your individual, your, your instincts, um, rather than relying on a data-driven approach to making decisions. So, um, there is a scientific decision-making process. We're going to set our objectives, we're going to collect data, we'll analyse the data, uh, we'll try and set some numerical values on things or um, some other way of comparing options and then we'll make our decision. So, what, what are the pros of doing that? Well, it's going to encourage us to collect some data uh, to aid in the decision making process and so that decision is actually evidence based. Okay, um, It's going to encourage us to consider more than one possibility. All right? So if we, uh, if, if we take option A, what's the chances of this happening, what's the chance of option B, um, C, etc. So uh, the scientific decision making encourages us to think that there's more than one possibility out there. Um, and it will also enable the entrepreneur to provide support for their decision. Um, this would be particularly important maybe in a bigger business or in a public limited company where we're trying to persuade shareholders of a particular course of action. What, act, what evidence do you have to back this up? Well, here it is. This is why we believe this. However, um, scientific decision making can be, can be time consuming. We've got to collect data, we've got to analyze that data, we've got to run probability models, we've got to discuss. Um, all of this stuff will take time and if a quick decision needs to be made, um, it may not be possible to um, go through the full scientific decision making process. It may reduce uh, creative thinking, um, and it's reliant on the collection of data which could be subject to bias or could be outdated. Great way to evaluate in an exam is to question the data. Who's collected it? What's their bias? How old is it? Etc. Okay, so intuitive or decision making based on gut instinct. This sounds a little bit wishy-washy maybe at, at, at first. Well, why would you make a decision based on gut instinct? But the more you think about it, um, the, the great example is the iPad. Um, that was a product, um, imagine trying to sell that when, when no one had heard of it. It's, uh, it's not a phone, it's bigger than a phone, you can't put it in your pocket. It's not a laptop, it hasn't got, you know, what is this and why am I gonna want it? If you'd put that forward to any kind of focus group, they'd probably have said, 
you know, there's there's no chance of wanting that. However, Steve Jobs, he loved the idea and he went with it. And um, you know, intuition-based decision making. Sometimes you can't tell what people won't tell you what they want. You have to create something, show them what they want. And this is where intuitive decision making may come in. So the pros of it are that it will tap into an entrepreneur's kind of gut instinct and talent. Uh, you know, what do I feel is right? What, what do I think that uh, I can bring? It allows for creative thinking and it also allows for quick decisions to be made. You don't have to back this all up with evidence. This is what I feel is right, Let, let's go ahead and do it. However, um, it may be subject to bias and um, the entrepreneur may only consider one course of action. They're so set on their idea, they're not prepared to listen to reason or um, consider any other viewpoints that may be out there. So when would we use these different um, uh, approaches to decision making? Well, um, scientific decision making is useful where there's a lack of experience, uh, maybe the team uh, isn't too sure or the business is going into a market where it's not had experience, it's going to want to go out and collect some data. Um, if people need persuading, um, we can look, you can show people your evidence if you've collected it. This is why I believe it um, and that might um, make people see your point of view. If you've already got a lot of data based on past sales etc and we don't need to go through that arduous dis the data collection then um, scientific decision making might be quite useful then. And if companies are risk averse they're not uh, they want to make a nice safe decision that they've got evidence to back up is going to be successful. Um, intuitive decision making would be kind of the opposite of that. Um, first of all, if quick, a quick decision needs to be taken in a crisis, right, let's go with our gut instinct. Um, if there's vast experience in the team, okay, the team's got a lot of experience with this market. If there's a lack of data available and we don't have time to collect it, let's make an intuitive decision. Um, and uh, when companies are risk takers. Um, of course, the best approach would usually be to do a combination of both intuitive, creative type decision making, backed up with um, backed up with some evidence. Okay, finally, in this video, just some terms that you need to be aware of from AQA. You probably are aware of these, but let's just formalise uh, with some definitions. Uh, a risk is the possibility that the desired outcome may not be achieved. A reward is when the business makes either financial or non-financial gains as a result of making a decision. Uncertainty occurs when the degree to which the outcome of a decision, uh, it's not a great definition, uncertainty is basically the degree to which the outcome of a decision uh, could lead to unknown consequences when you don't know what's going to happen as a result of making a decision. And um, opportunity cost key definition is the next best alternative for gone. For example, uh, most organisations will have limited resources, they're only going to have a certain amount of capital to invest in a new product. Okay, they might be considering opening a new restaurant in two different locations, they can't afford to do both. If they, afford, if they choose to go with one location, the opportunity cost of that is the benefits that they would have gained from locating elsewhere. Okay, so next best alternative for gone. Really important concept in uh, business. That is what opportunity cost is. Okay, so I hope that was a quick overview of management decision making.